Welcome to another speed draw. Uh, of course, this time around, this is Denki Kaminari for the Babysitting Judy uh, series. Um, I, I don't know. I just had some self reflection after watching through my speed draw originally, and um, I realized I did make quite a few mistakes on Kaminari. Um, I do hope I do become better at drawing him in general. I feel like he's the one that's been very problematic when it comes to sketching, um, which is a bit of a sad because I am actually enjoying writing his story sometimes. So I hope I can actually start getting uh, a good flow into um, drawing art on him too. Um, but this time around with the Q&A, with the questions, I've, I've, I've realized there's quite a lot that actually cropped up in Cero's um, uh, speed draw last week. So this is going to be extremely interesting. I do hope I can get through all of them um, in this one video. Uh, so I also realized that there are a few questions which kind of echo or they're quite the same. So hopefully I'll be able to... Um, double them up as well in the in this Q&A, but uh, let's get a start on it, shall we? <laughs> Again, I'd like to say thank you so much for enjoying these speed draws. Um, I really do appreciate actually being able to uh, answer all questions throughout these videos. Um, that way, it's um, I guess we can get to the bottom of a lot of things. And I know a lot of people keep asking questions in the comments. Um, which is fantastic. I would prefer it that way. And then that way they can get featured into um, whatever video I make next. All right, so um, enough of that. Let's get going. Line Liebst, I, I hope I, uh, Liebst, sorry. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, I'm so excited um, about you being excited about the Fantasy AU. I am trying to work on um, writing a few of the chapters out for that. Uh, but I believe you wanted to um, ask about what Bakugo and Shinso's, I guess, roles would be in the fantasy AU. Um, and I love the fact that you just thought Shinso, because of the interrogation video, which is between you and me, um, gave kind of a Prince or Warlock vibe. Um, so I will let this go. I did release... Um, a chapter of Bakugo's story for the Fantasy AU on my Wattpad account, um, but basically, uh, it's it's I'm I'm trying to build the world a little because I understand like there's a different there's different variations and different head cannons for the Fantasy AU, um, but uh, Bakugo is basically the crown prince of his kingdom. Um, his kingdom is barbaric in nature, as of course seen in like Horikoshi's like fancy AU canon art, where he's actually a barbarian. Um, so, yes, to answer your question plainly, Bakugo is a prince. He's the crown prince, which means he is actually the heir to the throne. So he he doesn't really lead the kingdom as of yet in this um in this fantasy AU I'm writing. Shinso, however, you are correct in that he is giving a warlocky vibe. So um, he is. Um, I am gonna try and see if I can design uh, Shinso's look a little, because the way I see Shinso and a lot of people have done this as a head cannon, he's like Hal and Hal's Moving Castle. So um, I do kind of maybe not to the extent of that kind of patterning in Hal, but the way that like how Hal maneuvers around the world. That's how I kind of see Shinso going about the AU world as well. Um, but yes, he is kind of up there as a prince figure. I don't think he's a prince overall, but he is a warlock, I will give you that. He's a warlock in the fantasy AU. Um, but again, if you'd like to have a good glimpse into what's happening for that, um, the first chapter for um, the Fantasy AU, which is called War of Beasts, is on my Wattpad account, so you can have a read of that as a sneak peek as to what's going to happen next. Tracy Comrade. There, hi again. <laughs> um, so you've wondered what kind of um, quirks would be categorized for the travelers because they're, oh well, of course, canonically there are three types, which is emitter, transformation, and mutant ones. Oh, and also what kind of things like support items would you imagine the travelers, the hero, the, or the villain 
costumes would have. Um, and I guess the examples you mentioned, of course, Bakugo and Midoriya's Traveler, where Bakugo's Traveler has like weights on the ankles and the wrists to keep them on the ground. And Midoriya's Traveler carries around like guns and um, ammunition and sniper rifles. Um, oh, and uh, you wanted to know as well, had I watched MHA in its entirety? Um, yeah, so far I have. I've, I've watched all of MHA in its entirety. Um, I also try to keep up with the manga as well. So there are some things like, for example, when I um, write stories, it's reflected because of the manga. Um, but, you know, um, I try not to put too much detail into that because I understand a lot of people don't read the manga. So there's that as well. Um, if I had to classify the travelers into, uh, I guess, uh, their quirk categories, um, considering there are three kinds, except for quirkless, of course, um, I would say that all of them are emitters except for Midoriya's Traveler, which is a mutant. Now, this is why I would like to explain this. So, Midoriya's Traveler being a mutant is partly because, again, all they can do is use their eyesight to, like, I guess, um, magnify um, for a fair distance away. Um, so, I guess, in a way that they, their eyesight actually has to change in order for them to see that far in pure clarity with no distortion whatsoever. So I would classify their, theirs as a mutant, um, but everyone else seems to be emitters after like having a quick read and understanding the three categories. Well, Kirishima's Traveler um, sends sonic waves out from their limbs, so they emit that. Shinzo's Traveler is a mind reader, an emitter. Um, Kaminari's Traveler, um, well, in a way, brainwashes, but through song, emitter. Uh, Sarah's Traveler travels by the speed of light. Now, I understand um, because Eda's is actually a mutant to for speed because, you know, he has engines on his legs. But the fact of the matter is that Sarah's uh, Traveler ca um, travels through a speed of light by cre generating a ball of light throwing it at a distance and then traveling to that ball of light and then traveling as a ball of light in a way. Um, so I guess that's more of an emitter than anything else. Bakugo's Traveler floats, practically an emitter. There's not much for a transformation or mutant quirk in that regard. In Todoroki's, well, is basically a waterbender and well, that's more of an emitter because they have to concentrate in order to create and move insurmountable amounts of water. Um, if I had to go with the um, other travelers, hero travelers, which include Ida, Tokoyami, and Monoma, because I have written for, well, I have written for Tokoyami and Ida, but not Monoma as of yet. Ida's is definitely a quirkless traveler. They just basically, you know, they're a mechanic. Um, Tokoyami's traveler is more transformation, and partly it's because. If you, I guess, uh, listen to the one video I've released of his, which is I'm Glad You're Here Stargazing. Um, one, the Traveler is blind in that one. And two, the Traveler is actually like, they transform in a way so then they can see through their eyes. So like using their quirk will allow them to see, whereas otherwise they'd be blind. Um, so that's more transformation in a way. And I just don't want to give away too much about the quirk as of yet until I write more. Um, Monoma I've not written for yet, but I would like to describe their quirk as more transformation as well. Um, if you were to listen to the villain Monoma um, video, which is the imposter, you kind of get an idea as to what they do. Um, they're kind of like a collector of quirks. But I say not really much like they hold on to the quirk. They're very much like Monoma in the sense they only have a certain amount of time to hold on to them. And the only way that they can, I guess, categorize um, their quirk, uh, the, the quirks, is through a deck of cards. So I think there's a word for it, but I'm, um, they kind of like a there's, a... there's a word for it. Rolodex. They're like a Rolodex. That's what it is. So if you look that up, you'll understand kind of how that quirk kind of works. If I were to go to the villains, 
uh, Darby's travel is more transformative. You'd think it was more emitted because the way that they work, they build a firewall, but the problem is they cannot generate it on by themselves. They had to get some external force to generate that. Um, so that is maybe where um, definitely Darby's Flames does that. So if they're in close proximity to Darby when he uses his quirk, they can absorb some of that energy to then throw outwards I guess or just any fire source in general so if they were in a, a burning building I guess they can actually generate enough power to make that kind of explosion in a way but that's the kind of thing that they work with um overhauls traveler is actually quirkless but, the, but there's a reason behind them being quirkless they originally weren't um so if they were to have the quirk that they had Previously, um, they'd be more transformation in a way. Um, I won't explain why because it kind of would give it away, so I'm really sorry, but that's the best I can talk about it. And Shigaraki's Traveler is more emitter because of the, I guess, the laughing gas that they exude from their own bodies. Um, and if anyone was curious, because the Doctor has re um, released what kind of quirk she holds, which is in Overhauls an Arm for an Arm video, she, uh, she's more transformative because she's able to actually regenerate parts of her body back. If she's lost an arm, she can regenerate it back. Um, so it's usually that kind of... Um, a, a regeneration, I guess, would be the name of the quirk, but that'll be hers as well. Now, I believe both Ashlyn Radio and Tracy Comrade asked a similar question. So, which is basically the pro hero travelers, um, I guess, what support items or special paths they would have, I've explained earlier. But also, Ashlyn Radio brought up what are the descriptions of the costumes would the pro hero travelers have in this universe? Um, so, I had done a couple of sketches on a handful of travelers not all of them about what they would wear and what support items they would have i guess the most um obvious ones which tracy has already mentioned is that bakugo's traveler requires weights in order to keep themselves on the ground midoriya's traveler requires guns in order to be useful on the field because then they can aim and shoot they're like a sniper um, a Todoroki's Traveler, um, they don't have support, oh they do have support items, they have like three water skins, water skins are kind of like bags of water they carry on their belt, so then they have something to carry with them everywhere they go, but also in recent Todoroki videos they are testing a new outfit which is kind of like a scuba lycra outfit, so if you get like scuba outfits they're meant to keep you um, your body warm or at least a core temperature warm while you're scuba diving so in this sense it's supposed to help them regulate their body temperature when they're on the field so it's almost for them right now they're trying to get used to that outfit and used to actually utilizing it with their quirk if we have to go with costumes and we go back to Bakugo's and Midoriya's outfits, um, you'll see them on the screen right now. So this is like my initial art as to what the travelers could look like. It may change, but I am happy with Midoriya's um, traveler having like a, a cape of some sort because then it helps like them in sniper mode when they're covered up and all that. They kind of meld into the background kind of thing. And with Bakugo's Traveler, I have changed it up a bit. I have drawn um, another version of them, which you will see on screen as well. Um, they're more because they they do actually, despite them floating, they've learned how to maneuver around the environment, which is why parkour is such a huge thing, uh, I guess, um, integral part of their um, physicality. So their outfits are a little more like, you know, I guess suited for running um, through environments so they wouldn't have anything flapping about they pretty much have clothes close to their bodies but also their body is more militant like so think what parachuters look like and kind of get kind of those ideas but that's Bakugo's traveler's outfit in a sense. The biggest thing that I think about about support items is should I ever continue with Ida's story after the I'm glad you're here video I've written about him? 
is that his traveler is basically a mechanic, you know, the typical cape and gloves and dirty like clothes and everything. But if they're on the field, if they have to be brought on the field, they carry around a big giant mallet, <laughs> like a big giant hammer, which in the villain video um, for uh, Eda's villain video, um, it's called Big Blue. And it's basically the little baby. It's like a big, big hammer, but they call it a little baby. So I'm, I'm really like kind of excited if I ever get into that um, kind of timeline because it'll be very interesting. Um, Kirishima's Traveler, um, basically with the whole shock waves and sound waves, they would have to have like parts of their like, I guess um, I've not really thought much. And again, you'll see it on screen what they look like. But um, I do want to give them something more so then they have maneuverability around their joints because the flaw is, is that they will seize up if they stop moving. So they'd have to have something to help their joints keep moving. They have to have like clothes, I guess, to keep themselves like not caught on anything because of the quick movements they'll have to do. But it's just a matter of like, they're almost in like, I would almost feel like that they're like Ojiro in a sense that they would have like this um, like fighter's outfit attached to them just so then it helps them with their maneuverability. Um, Shinso's Traveler as the mind reader is also the interrogator. They really don't have a hero outfit to go out heroing and stuff. Um, so they basically just, I guess they would just wear normal clothes. They don't really have a hero outfit. They're not exactly a pro hero, whereas Shinso is trying to be a pro hero in, in this instance, in this, in this AU. Um, I am trying to like design his outfit actually for babysitting duty, which I will actually have to explain a little further at the end of this video. So if you keep, uh, so if you, uh, I guess, um, Wait until the end of this video and then I'll give you some updates. Um, so who else am I missing? Sarah's Traveler is, is a thief and Kaminari's Traveler was a former villain. So Kaminari's Traveler, let's start with Kaminari's Traveler. They don't really have an outfit. Um, they're pretty much just like, you know, they're under custody, so they're kind of just wearing normal clothes and everything right now, and they really don't need any support items to do anything. They just have this quirk that they use and they can use on a whimsy. Right now, however, they have an anklet on, so it's kind of like those tracker anklets, you know, for, um, you know, um, people who have just, um, you know, been given bail or whatever from, I'm not sure how the, like the, the, the jail system works. I'm really sorry, but they, they do have an anklet, which actually prohibits them from actually using the extent of their quirk. So there's like a strength meter on the anklet to stop them from actually abusing what powers they have. Um, Sarah's traveler is a thief. Um, they've been described in the chasing foxes video that they have a fur trim. So Think of it that they, they, they attune themselves as like a fox. So they have a fur trim around their neck. Um, they have like skin tight clothing. They wear, instead of a mask, they just have black eye makeup just covering their eyes. So then it's just kind of acts like a mask. Um, but a lot of people have finally caught on that they're very much like Black Cat, as you can see the image on screen, what Black Cat looks like in the Spider-Man universe. So it's, I guess in a way, it pays homage and it alludes to the idea of Black Cat, except just think of it in a fox, thema like a fox thematic way. Um, but that's how they dress. Uh, they don't really have any support items. They just kind of like zoom in and out with their quirk wherever they go. Um, but other than that, um, it's not much really that they have. If they ever had a support item on them, it's because they probably, I guess, obtained one for a certain like thieving night or a mission if they had one just for that particular one. But they wouldn't carry anything in general. Um... I guess I think that's all the pro hero travelers actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's it. If anyone wants to hear more about other travelers in general, just um yeah, just let me know in the comments below and that might be in the next Q&A and I'll continue from there.
Will or would you write more pro hero Ida? Yes, I will. When I can. There's just so many things. Again, at the end of the video, I will explain. But the answer is yes. To cover this question short, it's just about the one line Sig said in Todoroki's babysitting video, which is True, you don't know me, but I know plenty about you, or at least what you could become. The question being is, is it like, what does that entail? Or is it relative to something else in the story? And it is actually. So Melody, you've mentioned that it doesn't relate to the story that Shoto told to um, as a bedtime story with the new nickname Angel. Yes, it does. And the shortest way I can say and answer that question is it relates firmly towards the fantasy AU of Todoroki and the Traveler in that world. As well as, of course, there is a line Seek actually says in the babysitting video. Um, he says, go to sleep, angel. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody else. And that's what Seek said. So that's also alluding to the fantasy AU. What got me into reading stories aloud as opposed to just uploading written versions, especially in the ASMR roleplay genre? Also interested in original stories. Um, so... I actually started off reading other people's fan fiction first, so lately with the whole recollect series that's coming out, it's just so then I am, I had used, um, like, I'm gonna be honest, I had used fan art from other artists, so, and I wanted to actually highlight the fact that the fan fictions that were read are not, do not belong to me, but are written by other t more talented people than me. So. Um, the Recollect series is basically just um, giving credit where credit is due um, in that regard. Um, but if it's in regards to any fan fiction stories I've written and why what has gotten me into reading stories aloud, I I did actually, and especially in the ASMR roleplay genre, um, so I was, um, I guess, a listener of ASMR like roleplays for a while. And I did kind of just go in and out wondering what did I like, what did I not like, what what kind of things um, interested me the most about them and everything. And then it's, um, I always say this story all the time, but one day I, um, I didn't like where I was working. It was a job where it will pay me like the bills and everything, but I didn't really like it. And I needed something that made me happy. Um, and I actually did get into, I guess, audible, like audiobooks for a while. And I wanted to try my hand at just reading just stories. And if it feels like, like, you know, a bedtime story, I don't know. I just have like, um, it could just be like, you know, um, nostalgic about bedtime stories for me. I... Well, let's be, I'm going to be honest again, I've never, no one's ever read to me a bedtime story. If anything, the last recollection of anything being read to me would be like in primary school, you know, when it's, you know, it's, it's nap time. And then the teacher reads you a story while you fall asleep with the rest of the students in the classroom, that kind of thing when you're a kid. But like, I always read, I always read books before I went to bed. Um... Sometimes, whether it's for school, like, for example, I had to read a chapter before, like, um, you know, the class would happen and all that, or I would just read a story that I got so engrossed in and I loved so much. And it's just the way of projecting your imagination and your inner voice to understand the story on the page. And it just felt really nostalgic for me. So seeing as nowadays um everyone's listening to audiobooks more and everything i just thought to give that a go uh, at the time i just thought why not narrate a story and you know like make voices as you go along I and i don't know i just feel like it just it just gives um i wouldn't say gives more credibility because i'm not the greatest storyteller in the world but I just like to play with voices. I like to play with the emotions, I guess, that come out of it. Um, so that's why I end up yeah, putting it in, I guess, this kind of genre. 
I may be wrong with the genre that this is be like that my content is being read in, but I guess in a way because of how big their community is, um, I just thought maybe it's a, just a good addition to add on to. Perhaps I'm not sure. I may be wrong. <laughs> um, but interest, any interest in original stories? I do. Um, I guess in a way that's where this lore is coming in for the channel. The lore itself, even though they are original characters of my own making, could is actually building up to a story in itself, um, like the backstory of how they came to be and why they're here and all that. Um, if I ever do an original story, I'm, I'm not sure how well it will be received, but like I am pretty, like I guess, happy to give that a shot if ever is the case. So um, we'll see how this channel goes and um, we'll just, um, you know, I guess see where it flies to, I guess. Oh dear, does Darby's Traveler know Sarah's Traveler or what about Darby? Since I'm under the impression the doc keeps more info away from the Traveler than what she does from Darby. Okay, true. The impression that Darby knows a bit more than the Traveler is true, and the impression that the Doc actually does talk more to Darby is also true. It's not been, I guess, highlighted or been explored yet in his timeline, but there is that inkling, and the Traveler, um, Darby's Traveler, does already have that feeling as well. Um, I guess Crazy Equals Genius. Um, the birthday video that I released for Darby could probably explain a little more of that. Um, but I guess in this way, no, neither Traveler knows each other. The reason why Sarah's Traveler is trying to seek Darby's Traveler is partly because they're still wondering why they're a failure or why they've been disowned, I guess, if not of her anything um so it's more for sarah's traveler it's a way of belonging however darby's traveler has no inkling about this whatsoever darby's traveler is an ignorant they just don't know um they don't know a lot of things and they know that a lot of secrets are being held by them but for Darby's Traveler, it's a, I guess it's a matter of conscience, conscience, sorry, um, a matter of conscience and a matter of, I guess, um, on a need to know basis, which is really, really difficult for them right now. So um, there's a lot of that tension that I want to explore. Um, more on Sarah's Traveler and the fact that did they have a bad childhood? Well, uh, Carboni, I'm sorry, I cannot um, pronounce your first name, which is Kuatemok. I get, I don't know. Um, but like, I will say this to like, um, you know, uh, just answer it plain and simple. The doctor is not Sarah's traveler's mother. No, no, no. The doctor. Okay, let's. Uh, I I will just m mention this now. The doctor has no familial connections with the travelers whatsoever. So that'll clear that out of the air. But to answer your question about Sarah's traveler having a bad childhood, a bad childhood in a way, in the sense that they were sick, they were ill, they couldn't eat a lot of food they suffered from a lot of like stomach aches like a constant stomach aches that's why they couldn't eat a lot they were also quirkless and in the world of like my hero a quirkless person which is i guess less than 10 percent is the minority so a quirkless person unfortunately would get the lowest brunt of everything unfortunately he's kind of racist if you had to try and like i guess compare that to the real world but this is where sarah's traveler has come from they came from the minority they were also very sick and ill um because uh, I guess you meant you were you're mentioning this Carboni because of the I guess fruit at certain meal times um, and far and few between. It, it is kind of true. I guess in a way it was also a matter of like even though fruit is good for you, whether it's good for the stomach is another thing dependent on the illness or I guess what ailment they suffered. Um, Fruit to them was a sometimes food, so in a way, fruit was like a reward. Um, 
but otherwise I needed to try and down something a little more substantial than fruit. So the bad childhood is basically be is because of the circumstance that they were in. If anyone wanted to um, ask any questions though, they did have loving parents. They had doting parents who tried their best to like help um, the traveler as a child, I guess in their childhood, to live a normal childhood despite these circumstances. But that's all I'm going to say until a little more gets revealed in the future. Where do we ask the questions? <laughs> like I mentioned, we ask them in the comments below. Um, but it, I, I have seen this phantom room, but um, will the travelers ever meet or overlap or have any interaction? They kind of had a little. So during, I guess like a few videos last year, which is I think during the time when Bakugo, um, I guess, uh, what is it? When, during the time when Bakugo proposed to the Traveler, there, there's a few episodes that they've overlapped. I think in Midoriya's video, One Step Forward does that. But the Christmas specials, which is the seven guys at Midoriya's apartment during the time when Midoriya himself proposes, they kind of overlap a little. Um, but if you're meaning about whenever they would meet, overlap, or have any interaction with each other, um, oh well, what I mentioned was probably what answered the question, but I had ideas actually, um, for future videos after the babysitting duty videos where, um, the travelers of other characters will have to partner up with another. So let's say, um, Bakugo's traveler would then have to uh, work with Todoroki, whereas like let's say Midoriya's traveler would then have to work with Bakugo, and then Todoroki's traveler would have to work with Midoriya. So they kind of swap around eventually. Like there was a, an idea I really wanted to like to explore after babysitting is done. Um, it is coming to the crunch time for babysitting duty, so I really want to make sure that that turns out really well. So I guess hopefully that answers your question. Hi Amari, um, so your question is, and you don't know if it's a spoiler, um, in the villain AU, do any of the villains leave the Travelers? Uh, let's, what does this mean? But are the Travelers the only people that leave or try to leave? Hmm. If you're meaning leaving as in like, they leave the Travelers, like, I guess, alone, or they, they leave them behind, or something like that, I guess... Out of the ones that have been released, the only ones that have been like cast aside or left behind would I believe is Shinso in the beginning. So Shinso did that in the beginning. So if you go back to his specialist video, there's like a flashback of them two together and then we're in the present where he's by himself and he's doing his thing. So during that whole time, Shinso does leave the traveler behind um, but then of course in the video he reconnects with them again out of circumstance of course every other villain though I guess to my knowledge does not leave the traveler um, however I believe um, I believe actually the three that I still am working on, which is Aizawa, Mirko, and Hawks, would probably answer your question a little further. So Aizawa's Traveler, which I believe I have explained um, in his 7 Minutes in Heaven video, is basically the Traveler that is canon to this AU, I guess. Um, Aizawa did leave them. Um, and also Hawks' Traveler, which you can find his timeline and then you know what his Traveler is like. Uh, the Traveler left him. Um, and there are reasons behind these things. It's just a matter of me trying to complete, the, complete I guess, their stories and to get them produced and uploaded as well. So all of the villain stories are, are still on back burner, but that's partly because I'm still stuck with this babysitting duty one here right now. So hopefully I'll get into um, exploring the villains again. Oh, Lauren Moss has two questions. 
Uh, one, what gave me the idea to make Sarah's Traveler kind of like Marvel's Black Cat? And two, are we ever going to get future videos about Bakugo, Deku, and Shoto's wedding with their travelers? <laughs> um, also, is it weird from, for all the travelers in your videos, I've given each of them a name. Um, so let's start with that one. No, it's not weird at all. Um, to be honest, that's the reason why I never gave certain, like, I guess, character names for characters because I prefer that if it's supposed to be meant to be a self insert or a reader insert it's for your enjoyment so I, I prefer to try and keep it as open as possible as possible um, to answer your first question about Sarah's Traveler um, what gave me the idea about Marvel's Black Cat well Sarah is very much like the Spider-Man of the AU. I, that's my headcanon. He is Spider-Man. Plus, Horikoshi did confirm that Sarah did look up to a comic book character, aka similar to his quirk, aka Spider-Man. So, I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it just kind of worked that way. And I feel like Sarah, as an underrated character in himself, um. I think he deserves more, I guess, excitement. So I just wanted to give and provide and give that kind of entertainment. Um, to answer question number two, though, are we ever gonna get future videos? Yes, you will. You, uh, it is planned ahead in time. Um, but the matter of the fact is, right now we are in the middle of, I guess, if we're going through timeline-wise, we are in the middle of like all of this happening to the guys with um, Seek just kind of causing some havoc everywhere. So it's a, I guess, it's a matter of finding the right time and for me the right mindset to actually write out these stories about like I guess their their marriages and their weddings and other future events ahead. Again, I think I mentioned in the last video that I really wanted to just, if I needed to get away from the bigger picture, I just kind of write one shots of things. So, um, I had already, I guess, um, I've written, I think someone suggested to me on my Discord to write a, like, a headaches kind of video. So little one shots like that kind of like bring me back into like, I guess, normal real life situations as opposed to like the outrageous situations that can happen in the My Hero universe. So when the mindset hits, I guess I will get into um, writing the wedding videos for the three and who knows, perhaps another proposal's on the way, hint, <laughs> but we'll see how we go. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that we got through all the questions that happened. Like, this is the most questions that have actually, that has actually been asked from, um, the Q&A. So I'm really proud of you guys for, like, keeping me on my toes. Um, but update time. This is update time. Um, Babysitting Judy at the moment has been, like, a really good series. Uh, at the moment, though, I know Shinso is the next character, but because a lot of things are going to run as a domino effect after Shinso's video is released, that it's... I actually want to make sure that I write it to the best of my ability so it can actually connect to a lot of things which is going to run its course. So the update, the major update is, is that unfortunately Shinso's um, baby, babysitting video will not be released this week. I hope to release him perhaps in the next, uh, in the next week. Um, but right now it's just a matter of me making sure a lot of these um, events align with each other because I want to give you guys the best entertainment possible in this timeline. And during this time, I'm also writing up a lot of um, uh, the fantasy AU stuff and the villain AU stuff. So hopefully that's prepared and ready to go to be produced. But let's, I'm going to be honest, I mentioned a community post a while ago. I was feeling a little burnout. Um, so I just want to take it easy and make sure that I give the best entertainment as possible to you guys as possible. But not to worry, that doesn't mean there's no video this Saturday. Um, there will be. Um, it's just not the typical, I guess, um, 
ASMR uh, fanfiction reading video. But I hope it will entertain you guys a little more and that I'm still presently here. <laughs> um, anyhow, thank you guys so much. Um, hopefully that I will have another Q&A video soon. But uh, keep asking. See you soon.